In Ron Howard's movie, Cocoon, senior citizens are rejuvenated by bathing in a pool storing alien beings in pods. Eventually, the aliens offer the elders much more than newfound vitality. We'll never be sick, we won't get any older, and we won't ever die. It's a metaphorical take on the fountain of youth, something humans have sought for millennia to no avail. Yet there's a growing handful of people who seem to have found a way to live, not just far beyond their predicted lifespan, but to also remain vital into their 10th decade of life. Dr. Nir Barzilai is studying a group of these exceptionally healthy centenarians, which became part of another Ron Howard film called The Age of Aging for the National Geographic Channel. So nice meeting you. How are he you? believes they're a model for how we can all age. Come on in, fellas. Hello. Hi. How are, you? how are you? How are you? One of the interesting things with those centenarians is to see how they interact with the environment. And we thought, hey, maybe they do all the right things. Do you eat something special? Do you? No, I try to keep a healthy diet. What about exercise? Exercise, I walk about a quarter of a mile for breakfast. I swam every day. So my body has always been uh, activated. And when you look at the population, you find almost the opposite. I go every, uh, just about every afternoon to Dunkin' Donut, and I have coffee there and, and a, a Boston cream, that sort of thing. Your eating habits are not necessarily healthy. Uh, that's true. I smoked for Minus uh, 14, 50, right? so 50 years. 50% 50 of them are obese, 50% of them do not exercise, 60% of the men and 30% of the women are smoking. So it's in spite of all that, that they have some protection that allows them easily to get to age 100. What we do find that they have is genes that are protecting them against anything that's thrown their way. Dr. Barzilai believes his centenarians have genetic mutations that seem to slow their biological aging. He also believes there's a medication that may be able to delay the effects of aging in the rest of us. Metformin, a well-known, well-studied, inexpensive, FDA-approved diabetes drug that will be used as a tool to change FDA indications specifically to target aging. It's been said that having kids later in life keeps you young, and research suggests that being around young people can keep you feeling and acting young. Well, it turns out there may be a cellular version of all that. It comes from experiments done in the Rutgers, New Jersey Medical School lab of Dr. Pernella Rameshwar. She's found that taking stem cells from young people and incubating them with stem cells from older people has a remarkable rejuvenating effect on the older cells. It, we separate these cells by a membrane. And what, it, and what we noticed is that the old cells were communicating with the new cells through that membrane and telling them perhaps, restore me. And the old, young cells in turn were releasing factors. And that was getting through the membrane, entering the old cells. And those old cells suddenly, when we do the tests, they were functionally similar as the young cells with time. Why is that important for aging? If those stem cells come from bone marrow, the revitalized cells would generate a more competent immune system. That would enable an older person to ward off the often lethal viral and bacterial infections of the elderly. Just as importantly is the impact a reinvigorated immune system could have on cancer. Older people tend to have cancer um, at a higher rate, but now you have a competent immune system with a better surveillance system to get rid of those cancer cells before they become a clinical tumor. While these findings argue for banking your stem cells while you're young so that they can be used to rejuvenate your cells later in life, experiments are currently underway to identify the factors that stem cells use for communication and rejuvenation. So we think we know what factor is produced by the young cells to get into the old cells. Um, we may be able to isolate that factor and make it into a drug, perhaps it could be just made into a factor as a drug injected, or maybe we may need the aid of other stem cells to deliver so it goes exactly where we wanted them to go. However this rejuvenating factor is delivered, the goal is not just to contribute to a longer life, but also a healthier life.
A related but somewhat different approach to using stem cells for rejuvenation is being taken at Human Longevity, Inc. Right now, we're carefully studying the quality and the quantity of stem cells in our different tissues and our organs as a function of age, and we are treating those changes by re-delivering young stem cells. And what we're finding is that those young stem cells have the ability to improve the quality and the functionality of the whole stem cell population in the organ or the tissue. The problem is, where do you get these younger, vital stem cells to give to an aging population? Cells from young donors present rejection issues, and in any case, there likely wouldn't be enough donors to satisfy the demand. Turns out that healthy human placentas are an abundant source of stem cells, or technically very early progenitor cells. What our clinical research has shown us is that placental stem cells are one size fits all and that I can give a stem cell from one placenta into someone who's not even related to that, to that donor, and they, they take up and do their job perfectly well. But a placental cell is the perfect donor material, which means there's hope for you and me. We didn't have our stem cells stored away, but we have the benefit of using stem cells that are normally gonna be disposed of. But however this rejuvenating effect is achieved, drugs, cytokines, donor stem cells, or other ways still being developed, the goal must be improving the quality of years in a life, not just the quantity. Otherwise, longer lifespans would be disastrous for society. We're using up so much of the planet's resources now. Uh, we have over a billion people in poverty, uh, so just adding more people to the planet by having them live longer is not a good society goal. Uh, having everybody have an increased healthy lifespan increases productivity and hopefully uh, uh, we can move more into a sustainable kind of uh, living.